you've probably wondered how people dominate so hard within World of Tanks console and sometimes it's to do with the tank and today's video is showcasing one of the fantastic broken almost tanks that is in World of Tanks and it is the Demolisher T28 and this is a T28 which recently got buffed um, so its armor actually works now as opposed to what it previously was um, and this version of it has a three shot autoloader which means that it's super dangerous for anyone that really comes up against it. You've got 1080 hit points worth of damage that you can dish out in about five seconds and that means that pretty much anyone that you come up against that's lower tier than you, you can remove all of their hit points unless they're maybe a, a tier 7 heavy like a tiger or something like that you know within reason you can demolish the rest of their hit points hence why I guess they call it the demolisher however the tank does have a few weak points and the side armor is one of them it's American of course which means that the side armor has to be paper and of course it also is not the fastest tank you're ever going to see around but once you get past the fact that you're probably not going to be racing any EBRs around, you'll be able to still have some really, really good games, predominantly based on the fact that you get into the right kind of position at the beginning of the game, and because when you do get into the right position, you can do this, what you're seeing against the Eradicator on the enemy team here, where we can just lock down his tracks, repeatedly hit him with your alpha damage, and then, yeah, he's on, like, what? 30% of his hit points within a couple of shots and about five seconds for us now Demolisher a lot of the time I thought oh, it's a T28 it's probably got no armor so you're gonna be relying on the uh, the auto loading aspect of the tank but to be honest with you no the armor does actually work and you can see a few rounds bouncing off us there are some rounds going into the cupola which you can't really help to be honest but when they don't properly aim at the front of the T28 and aim for the cupolas on top, which are a weak point, you know, you can get penned fairly reliably if they hit you there, but if they don't, it's pretty disgusting as we get hit by probably the most disgusting thing in the game, the artillery, and we have managed to pick up 1500 damage. Now, don't get me wrong, three minutes into the game or just under there, um, is not the best damage result however the game kind of progresses from this point on and you don't necessarily have to have the best game ever and hence why you probably see a lot of demolishers when played correctly coming top um, and I think the demolisher is one of those that is a really good starter if you're not interested in autoloaders or you haven't played them and you want a tank to kind of ease you gently into the uh, the playstyle, then the Demolisher is actually a really, really good one. You don't have a super, super long reload whilst also having the Pack-a-Punch to just knock your opponents out when you do manage to get them out in the side or, or whatever it may be. And it really benefits from... Uh, good aim and since the accuracy of the demolish is really good as well you can be disgustingly um, annoying to the opponents that you're coming up against tracking them repeatedly tracking them just being a real nuisance and we all know that being a nuisance in world of tanks is actually fun hence why everyone likes playing the derp guns kv2 etc etc all of those sort of things that's what makes world of tanks world of tanks right anyway 2,040 damage done within this game and it's looking like the rest of the enemy team are going to be going towards our base which is probably not something that I want to lose to hence why we're moving back that way and uh, I guess that the demolisher is one of those that when you ma maintain the hit points of your tank nearer the end of the battle they become it becomes like super super deadly because a lot of the time, as you can see in this game, most of the tanks that you're coming up against don't actually have the hit points to withstand one of your shots, let alone having three, and it means carrying at the end of the game is really, really easy. And the sort of situations, what you can see here, where you're coming up against uh, the side or broad side of tanks and they literally don't know what they're doing, it's so easy to pick up damage and 3000 damage may not seem like a lot but when you combine that with the fact that you can earn I believe 75% extra silver with this tank it means that you can really make 
unbelievable amounts of silver. And when you actually couple that with the fact that if you have the season pass and you've completed the season and then you've progressed a little bit further as well, you will have been able to get an extra 25% silver plus any silver boost. You know, this is like having a Cold War premium in World War Two, it earns genuinely like 150,000 silver a game uh, and if you have a superb game uh, and you're not using boosters you'll still earn like 200,000 silver which is amazing. Um, does it necessarily compete on average against the Cold War premiums? Probably not but if you're wanting to play World War 2 and you don't want to sacrifice the fact that you have to play True Vision and maybe you're a World War 2 only player, then the Demolisher is a really, really good choice for you to actually uh, play and get some silver on your account uh, whilst also actually having fun because the primary aim of playing World of Tanks is to have fun and if you're just grinding through a tank because you need the silver, it's not usually that fun. And within this game, you know, we've picked up 3,745 damage. It's no... 99th percentile game where you've suddenly managed to pull out like 8,000 damage in this tier 8 but it is going to showcase what you know if you have a good game uh, what you're likely to actually get within the game and we've got another replay to go through in a second when the artillery pigs finally get destroyed and we'll skip ahead now to to that point now then with the victory screen coming up we have uh, of course mvp 3,745 damage five 1570 xp really really good game to a degree you know we could have had a better one but we didn't and it's come out all right now then we're in the next gameplay it's highway highway is one of my favorite maps in the game especially when you get a tank like the demolisher where you've got good accuracy you can get into the right position over on this left left hand side and you can basically screw over anyone that decides to cross the field whilst then also cross the field later on when the game kind of uh, goes your way if you win this flank and of course if you don't win the flank you typically get taken out so it doesn't really matter but anyway what are we seeing here? Well, we've got to be pretty aggressive, and whilst I say pretty aggressive, this is, from memory, a tier 10 game, so we can't be super, super aggressive, because, yeah, the armour doesn't necessarily work against those tier 10 tanks that you'll be seeing, and so you have to be a little, at least a little bit careful. Now, got one shot in at the beginning, which is a little bit disappointing, was hoping the first one would go in as well, but we can't fret too much, at least we haven't lost any health so far, which is always good. Anyway, with the Conqueror advancing and this light tank being over here, it could be a little bit difficult for us to kind of move forward and, and help our team over on the left hand side, um, at least on the opposite side of the map, but we do manage to pinpoint a shot between the uh, Emil on our team's uh, turret and his hull, which is nice. Now we do have this light tank that's pushed up over to the left. We're on a bit of a long reload, which is obviously not ideal. 17 seconds, although being quite a long period of time, I guess, where you haven't got anything to do, uh, where you could get caught out, is not long enough to warrant a lot of the enemies being able to like deal multiple, multiple shots in a row into you because you know, 17 seconds, that's usually about two heavy hits from like a heavy tank or something like that. So it's not the world's end when so you uh, you get found out and someone just manages uh, to kind of get you. Obviously being focused by the artillery for some reason, apparently trying to shoot behind the building and just going for splash damage of 50 is worth it. But there we go, hey ho, if it was me and the artillery, I'd be going for the full health tanks because... What's the point in playing artillery when you're going for like 50 damage? Anyway, 1594 damage in this game. In order to actually make it a good game, we have to advance. I'm in this sort of boat where sometimes being passive and being super, super passive is not always the best option because sometimes if your team aren't being aggressive or maybe they're not spotting or maybe they don't know where to go and when to push, this sort of play can be really really beneficial for your team and already we've managed to spot two tanks here that probably wouldn't have got spotted as easily and so we were able to kind of progress and help the team to a degree so that we can then actually win the game and we can go about our day and hopefully get some more uh, some more damage within the game 
I got an Indian Panzer here who bounces, which wasn't the best idea since we take him out within a very swift movement after that. And now it's a case of just spotting and lighting up all of the opponents that we can for our team so we can get some assistance damage if possible. Um, and also, as and when needed, get some actual damage in the game because, you know, being uh, an autoloader, it's all about damage really. One thing I do want to talk about though within this game is actually autoloaders themselves. If you've actually been interested in seeing what autoloaders at least at tier 10 are like then maybe you'd be interested in checking out my second channel which I do have. It's on PC so we're looking at PC content on there. Um, so we're trying to do a little bit of both. Obviously upload still every single day on World of Tanks console. Don't worry about that. Um, it's just an addition for those of you interested in that as well. But Regardless of that, we did a video on the autoloaders and we looked at a couple of uh, clips. It's more of like a compilation, which is interesting uh, to see how they differ. And I think PC and console autoloaders, I think console actually probably have more overpowered autoloaders than the PC version because you get the increases to the accuracy on the console, which means that the autoloading mechanic is more effective because you're not bouncing as much. And also... You get a better reload as well because you have perks that literally increase the reload of those autoloaders by 10%, which you don't get on PC. And that is really where I think console and PC uh, have kind of gone their separate ways. Autoloaders have become even more overpowered, being that if they're in the right hands on PC, they are super overpowered. But on console, autoloaders are even better, which makes me think like if you had an autoloader variant of a tank compared to the normal standard version, nine times out of ten, I'd actually pick the autoloader version. And of course, that is exactly what we're doing here. Probably the reason why I actually enjoy playing the Demolisher over playing the Tech Tree T28 prototype. But there we go, a pretty bog standard game, at least with damage and combined. But we picked up 93,000 silver, which is really, really nice with no XP boosters or silver boosters whatsoever. Don't forget, check out that video on autoloaders on screen right now if you're interested for PC. And of course, there is also the gameplay of the Lurva as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.